Make sure to follow the game on Steam to hear when we're doing free demos, player surveys, when we're on sale, and other exciting updates. Hello, welcome to the Beer and Tech panel, where we're going to be talking to a panel of experts in various parts of the brewing and beer industry about their experience uh, with the brewing scene and also how technology intersects with it. Um, brewing and drinking beer has been one of the oldest crafts and pastimes forever. And because of that, it's been hugely impacted by tech along the way. Uh, so we wanted to talk to these people about what their thoughts on that was. Uh, today we have me, Andres. Hello, I'll be your moderator. I am a senior programmer on Brewmaster, an upcoming uh, game that is a beer brewing simulation game. Um, we also have Kenny. Uh, feel free to introduce yourselves, by the way, as oh, I call, you, I call hey. your names out. Uh, anything in particular you want to know? Favorite color? Favorite beer? Uh, just kind of give a rundown of uh, who you are, why you're here, what your uh, credentials are, I guess. And then sure. also, sure, why not? Your favorite beer. Great. Uh, my name is Kenny Gould. I'm the founder of a digital beer magazine called Hop Culture. Um, I also now work for a company called Untapped, which is a uh, beer rating app um, for iOS and Android. And what can I tell you? Uh, favorite beer. Wow. Um, I suggested it, and it's a really hard one. So... Uh, I'm going to go with the the first craft beer I ever tried, which was Allagash White from uh, Allagash Brewing in Portland, Maine, in the United States. They are just a beautiful brewery, making terrific beer, and uh, they're really nice people, too. So that's going to be my choice. Justin, do you want to hop in with your favorite beer? Yeah, sure. Hi, my name is Justin. I'm the owner and head brewer at Moore Beer Company. Uh, we're a brewery located in Bristol and England, and we've also got tap rooms in Bristol and in London. Uh, originally from California, hence the, the strange accent, but I uh, have lived in, brewed and worked in places like Germany, England, California, and whatnot. So, uh, yes, a few gray hairs. Uh, as far as favorite beer, it's a question that I think brewers and longtime drinkers always struggle to answer. I've got some Desert Island beers, but uh, I've heard people say that the best beer is the one that I'm drinking right now. This is not drinking a beer now, but I'm very much looking forward to traveling to my favorite beer city, which is Bamberg, tomorrow. I'll be going to my friend's new brewery that he started up uh, in the oldest pub in Bamberg called Zimsternla. And he started a new brewery there, so really interested in, uh, in drinking his, his new beers and also seeing from a technological point of view how he's taking some new equipment and producing old school loggers. So yeah, it should be great. Yeah. Sounds, sounds awesome. And uh, Jack, we've shared a few pints, but I actually don't know what your favorite beer is. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I agree. My favorite beer is the beer that I'm drinking right now, but as I'm not drinking a beer, the last beer I drank uh, was actually a contender anyway, um, which was, it was a strawberry beer uh, by Vault. I think it was called strawberry Sunday or something like that, but it was, it was really nice. Um, kind of not as sweet as a lot of fruit beers. Uh, sort of had like a sour beer kind of edge to it. Um, and that was just delicious. Uh, that was up in Newcastle when I had that one. Uh, and I sh should introduce myself as well. Uh, so I'm also on Brewmaster uh, and I'm the, the lead programmer on the project. Awesome. So now that everyone's equated, I kind of sort of just wanted to jump right in to the current state of the beer brewing scene. Um, so like... I wanted to hear your guys' thoughts on sort of where it's going, what the biggest areas of growth are right now, and um, especially with, you know, tech constantly, you know, uh, improving and, and being integrated into everyone's lives, how that's affecting that state um, and those areas of growth. Uh, let's start with uh, Kenny. Awesome. Um I think it's hard to talk about beer right now without talking about what has been going on uh, across the world for the last two years. Um, COVID definitely changed a lot, uh, especially for an industry that was really reliant on uh, tap rooms and, and people coming in in person and, and gathering in person to 
make their money. Um, so, you know, uh, a ton has changed, but I think um, a ton has also um, developed, right? Uh, what is it? Necessity is the mother of invention is the phrase. And I think, I know in the United States, at least a lot of breweries responded in really interesting ways to the challenges that COVID presented. Um, I referenced the U.S. because because I'm based here. I uh, probably should have mentioned that I'm in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So that's what I've seen happening uh, around me. A lot of breweries leveraging digital platforms and some relaxation in craft beer shipping laws to sell beer online for the first time. Um, a couple people had been doing that in some select states uh, over the past couple years, but I think recently it has really um, proliferated and there's been a lot more interest in, in being able to get on your phone or your computer, buy beer um, and have it arrive at your doorstep not long after. So um, that's been super interesting to see uh, the app that I'm now working with untapped. Um, we've, we've seen a lot of people checking in beers uh, from kind of those online platforms. Whereas maybe two years ago, we were seeing more tap room or, or bar uh, check-ins. We have definitely had a big increase uh, on the back end when, when we can check out the data and the amount of people that have been actually ordering beer um, online. So yeah, I think that's uh, an area that is, we're, we're just starting to see um, more and more of that. We're at, we're at the tip of the iceberg, just being able to hop on your phone and order beer like you might order toothpaste uh, or light bulbs. So I think that's an area of tremendous growth moving forward. It's very interesting to see how COVID sort of affects every industry. And um, I wanted to ask Justin, like, have you had experience personally with COVID sort of pushing, uh, you know, you, you and your company to sort of move more online uh, or just use technology differently? Have you, as does that line up with your experience? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there's no question as Ken was saying that, that COVID radically changed the world. Uh, fortunately, we're a small enough business that we were able to react relatively quickly uh, to the, the complete change in the business dynamic. So prior to the pandemic, we were selling more or less 80% of our beer in draft to, you know, direct to pubs and shipping it around the world. Uh, the pandemic happened, Brexit happened. So the ability to, uh, to sell to pubs basically was impossible and to do things like exporting that Brexit caused tremendous problems for also, uh, sort of ended all at once. So we had to effectively reinvent how are we going to get beer out to, to the consumers because we lost all of our normal channels. And of course, it's, it's going online. So we had a, a really rudimentary web shop prior to the pandemic where we sold virtually nothing you know, direct to the consumer. It was more of a marketing exercise. Uh, and, and we had to really activate that super quickly. And we we're really pleased with the results. It happened uh, quite rapidly. Everyone was, was really keen to, to embrace that as a new technology and a new way of buying, buying beer. And it is easier in the UK than it is in the States uh, to, to ship things around. So that was really critical to keep things going for a while. We're seeing a shift back to you know, people drinking in pubs. Uh, beer for me is, is an incredibly social thing. There's nothing better than uh, you know, being in a pub and drinking with your friends. So that's where we want to get people back to whilst uh, do appreciate people couldn't do that for, uh, you know, the better part of two years and had to do that at home. So it's great that we've got the flexibility to do both now. And, and without the technology behind it, had COVID happened and, and this lockdown happened without the ability to interact with consumers directly through a digital platform, that uh, there would have been nothing, basically. So is is it something that you're seeing where uh, people that sort of shifted to the online uh, side of things um, are now coming all coming back to the pub, or is there still a large group of people who are you know still only um, participating through these online platforms and stuff? Um, like what's sort of like the shift at, in the post-COVID world? Is it everything going back to normal, or you know is is tech really staying in a big way? 
Uh, it's a little bit of both. I think it's it's definitely here to stay now. So I am very happy that we have a new channel for interacting directly with consumers and for the people who prefer to, to interact that way. It, it's fantastic and we're really happy that it's there. It is definitely shifting back towards people drinking much more you know, in on, on trade in, in pubs and in, in restaurants and at events and things like that. But we have certainly retained, uh, you know, weekly people who order weekly or have monthly subscriptions. And that's, you know, I'm glad that that's here to stay, but I'm also glad that the pubs are open again and, and we can drink together with our friends. Uh, Jack, I know uh, Brewmaster was sort of in the conceptual stages um, before COVID really hit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and obviously uh, the games industry also was impacted by COVID. Did you sort of see a, a sort of increased interest in brewing simulation type games during the COVID uh, pandemic or nothing uh, noticeable? That's hard. To say. I think there was definitely an increase during the first lockdown, at least in people being interested in like making things themselves, you know, a whole load of people had a whole load of time that they didn't have before and they would take up new hobbies uh, for people who had, you know, the space. I'm sure homebrewing was probably, you know, uh, there were probably a lot of people who took up homebrewing during the lockdown. Um, but yeah, as part of like a, a broader increase in people like having lots of time where they can't go to the pub with their friends. And so they take up various different sort of crafting activities. Um, but in terms of like the the game, the gameplay, I think like, it you know it, it hasn't really changed how uh how the game is or anything obviously it changed how we developed it we all went you know working remotely and stuff and and that's and that's all we've all been fine really um uh, well, you mentioned um you know more people jumping into brewing at home um and i, I think it's really interesting how sort of uh you know on the on the flip side of the industry sort of you know, uh take jumping on uh, more technological solutions to get in their beer out there. There is sort of a boom in the homebrewing space as well. So I wanted to ask you, Kenny, um, specifically, uh, you know, how has technology itself improved accessibility to homebrewing? If, if that's something that you've seen on your side as well. Hmm. It's an interesting question. Um, I think that, look, the, the fundamentals behind brewing, I think, as you mentioned earlier, have been the same for how many thousands of years? Uh, <laughs> right. You take sugary water and you season it with uh, hops or <laughs> other ingredients and you add yeast and you get fermentation. Um, so I think, you know, that that process, the process of fermentation hasn't changed, Right. Um, where things have changed and, and where, yeah, we've seen more and more people be able to just access institutional knowledge is through, uh, online forums, you know, um, beer advocate is another company that, um, we work with and, uh, they're the oldest online, um, you know, uh, repository of, of online forums about beer, um, at least in the United States, they're coming up, uh, I think it's either 20 or 25 years. Um, but you know, to be able to get on there or to get on Reddit or to, yeah, get on untapped, um, and be able to read about different hopping techniques or, uh, share, best practices with strangers across the world um, to be able to order ingredients now from from across the world. I think globalization has really changed um, what people have access to. Um, A lot of our hops, you know, come from the Pacific Northwest in the United States. They also, uh, a lot of them come from New Zealand, right? So in order to set up a, a global supply chain like that, you, you need technology, you need um, ways of not only communicating with people who are thousands of miles away, but, but also um, ways of reaching them. Um, so whether it is through communication channels uh, like the internet or, um, you know, faster travel or, or different methods of cold storage so that ingredients arrive 
in the best condition possible. Um, you don't really think about that when you're sitting on your back porch, you know, getting ready to boil some water to make five gallons of, uh, you know, IPA or, or brown ale, but there is an entire ecosystem that led to, you know, that little packet of hops getting on your table that, um, would be impossible without <laughs> modern technology and transportation. And, um, it is when you really trace it back to like where all the ingredients come from and stuff, um, and, and even where the knowledge comes from and how that reached you, uh, it's a wild web. And so, um, I just think that's, that's so cool. Um, when you really start looking back and think of the resources that went into getting, yeah, a five gallon homebrew kit and four ingredients, uh, into your hands, it, it really takes a lot. Justin, I, I wanted to sort of follow up on that homebrewing question itself then. Uh, do you sort of see the gap between homebrewing tech and, you know, large industrial brewing sort of becoming smaller as things go, as time goes on, or is it becoming larger as, you know, they both improve undoubtedly, but is one moving faster than the other, do you think? I think, well, I started out as a home brewer. I got interested in home brewing in, in the early 90s and effectively built my brewery as for lack of a better words, a giant homebrew kit. You know, we've improved technology in the back end bits of it as we've gone along. And to be honest, I think for a while, home brewing technology was leading professional technology in the small to medium tier. Uh, so I guess what I mean by that is you could get micro sized or homebrew sized uh, access to to ingredients, to equipment. Home brewers are incredibly uh, innovative in trying to just craft things themselves to mimic something that they thought would be a cool process that actually for a large scale brewery might be very expensive and complicated to do. So it's, um, I think they constantly switch back and forth as to which one has the, uh, perhaps the more sort of leading edge technology, but certainly the ability to adapt and create things at a, at a micro level to homebrew level is perhaps a bit quicker than as you start to scale things up. Uh, but from uh, being looking at it from a production uh, point of view, an example we could talk about would be things like hop rockets. So the way that people dry hop and infuse things. And I remember drinking, you know, back when Dogfish Head was doing like a Randall and was basically just, a, you know, a filter to pull, you know, to pull beer directly through through hops, which, you know, then started to become micro-sized homebrew little hop rocket things that you could buy well before the size of brewery I've got or, or my peers could buy like a hop rocket type uh, setup. So, you know, there's, there's a direct example, but we're always looking at ways of improving technology in the beer production side. And I think what is happening that I find exciting and encouraging is things being much more focused on the lab and sort of in process type checks. So a lot of sensors and things like this that pr prior to you know, really recent times would have been completely outside anyone's economy of getting would have only been available to the largest brewers, things like doing, you know, yeast cell counts and, uh, you know, inline checks for, for lots of QA parameters. That stuff is starting to become cheaper and more miniaturized. So it's some of it is starting to become a little bit more affordable to the small to medium sized brewer. And then that's going to translate down as well to sort of the home brewer level. And the, the question then becomes one of, uh, professional grade accuracy and reliability because some of these things do exist now you can get sensors to drop in like your homebrew kit or whatnot uh, but perhaps from a production point of view if you're actually selling something commercially and you have to worry about its its accuracy and its robustness because there's you're producing thousands of liters of beer at a time that's something that's uh, will constantly get miniaturized become more affordable become more robust justin i i had a question for you actually based on that um as a professional brewer, what do you think is the coolest piece of technology that you've had a chance to use in your career? Or um, what is something that you really enjoy using that blows your mind every time you get a chance to, to play with it? 
Uh, the first and most important thing is your tongue. I think that, that's the best bit of technology that was ever created. <laughs> um, so that's that absolutely your, your senses to me, there's nothing that will ever be able to, to replicate that. But as far as like a fun little tool or gadget, uh, the thing that, that we like playing with and every time I see it kind of, especially the way we've got it hung up in the lab makes me kind of chuckle a little bit is our density meter. So for those who do home brewing, uh, you'll be used to something called a hydrometer, which is uh, which is basically a, a glass. Uh, it looks like kind of like a big old school thermometer thing, and it's glass, and you put it in a plastic tube, and you put your your liquid inside, and it measures how much sugar is in there by floating. So how much it floats it tells you how much sugar is in solution, and of course you'll see that in the game. Um, as you start to move up to the, the professional levels, then having a piece of glass uh, in the in the lab is a bit of a is a problem they break a lot they're you know they're dangerous and whatnot so what you can do is you start to move up into photo sensors and you know small scale electronic things so our density meter that we've got is a little handheld thing it almost looks like an old school uh you know sort of uh, you know laser gun out of you know out of a 60s sci-fi <laughs> film and you basically just instead of having to use half a liter of beer every time you want to take a sugar measurement you can use just a few mil and so it's something that yeah it costs a lot more than the glass equivalent but you can basically suck up a really small amount of liquid which is much more efficient you can get a much more accurate reading and it just kind of looks fun and it's fun to kind of pick it up and squirt and play with <laughs> that's awesome i actually just grabbed um i have this cane uh it's a brewer's cane um it's like a walking cane and it's mm -hmm probably 150 years old, but, um, the cap screws off and, uh, it has a, um, uh, I, I thought it was a hydrometer, but it's actually, it says here, it is an ale measure, um, from the Lehman and Webb Burnley company, but it's, I guess for measuring the depth of, um, uh, beer and how much has been taken by the angel's share. So, um, I think to go from, you know, something like this to uh, what you're talking about now, where there are brewers who have access to lab equipment that, uh, you know, 150, 200 years ago when somebody was using this had probably didn't know even uh, that what microbiology was is, is pretty, mm. pretty neat. Yeah, that's super cool. I had no idea that existed. That's fascinating also yeah. i i can't wait for there someone to make a mechanical tongue now uh since <laughs> to, to rival your comment about that being the most important piece of technology uh jack i i wanted to ask uh i know um uh in in the making of brewmaster um we did a lot of research on uh beer brewing and you know just the scene in general so i want to ask is there any big things any takeaway points that you wanted to add uh from that research um well like about the scene in general um in or just of, you know home brewing and home brewing yeah um i mean the da, 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 da. sorry i just brain has gone blank for a moment um oh sorry can i just have a it's been a long day excuse me for a moment That's, it's uh... late it's late in england yeah, uh, no, it's... it's not. It's not that late. It's just uh, no, it's been very to busy. To <laughs> <laughs> um, As someone who's also on Brewmaster, I know I look at Cherry, but that's just me all the time. Uh, it's 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 been a it's been a long day. It's, it's been fine. a long day. <laughs> can we uh, can we re ask the question again and then? Uh, yeah, like Sorry, that's during the... the research of Brewmaster, when we did a lot of surveys yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to ask if there were any like key takeaway points that you learned about um, the brewing scene or, or home brewing in general. Yeah, so I mean, for for us, like uh, in the making games, like the data side of things is quite important. Um, you know, when you're making a beer, obviously knowing what's going on in your data in, in, within your beer is is really critical to getting a good beer. And then for us, like knowing who the players are and and what they're doing and what they're thinking and what they enjoy is like a crucial part of um, of making the game. And like the the marketing team here do a great job of. Um, of like finding that stuff out and and when we did some surveys earlier on we you know half of the people playing a game are people who are already brewing beer who just like want to do more of it and they, they want to be able to you know 
do all of the stuff, try all the ingredients they don't have. And then the other half are people who are just like interested in it. So, um, you know, as a, as a sort of, uh, you know, a game is a piece of technology, but it's, it's in that, like, it's a place where people can learn. And, and that's like an important part of it is, is, is how do you, how do you, cause it's such, such a complicated process. And like a lot of people, you know, the the science that goes into it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper and like how do you get enough of that knowledge and how do you present like just enough at the right time to the player that they can learn and then if they want to go deeper they can go deeper but um but they don't have to they can still enjoy the process of making a beer uh you know with on on easy mode uh in the game um but then like how yeah having that that realism and and you know the tools that you speak of, uh, you know, inline measurements and all of that sort of stuff. Like within the game, you have the X-ray mode and stuff, and that's you know cheating in a way. But it means that the players can can look into their beer and see what's going on, and they can they can either ignore all of those numbers if if they're not interested in numbers, and they can just like play with the flavors, or if they want to, they can look into those numbers and they can like learn something about the science that's going on under the hood. And I think that's like. Uh, like a critical part of of what the game is really yeah i I love uh you know you all were talking about some of the cool new tech and stuff uh and and we've also done some brewery tours and stuff where they've showed off some of their cooler tech and it was really fun uh seeing that stuff and being like that's you know we're working on getting that a lot of that stuff in the game no brewers cane not yet at least (laughs) (laughs) dlc dlc you didn't didn't even know it existed to be honest but uh uh, a a lot of the other stuff we've talked about is definitely in the game um, one, one coin, uh, one side of the coin of, of tech, um, that, uh, we haven't talked about yet is social media. Um, you know, um, uh, obviously Kenny, you probably have, have the, the most experience here, but like, how has the rise of social media, you know, as a, as a platform sort of affected how breweries build communities? Cause community building is such an important part of, of, you know, building your brand and all of that. Um, and, and obviously, you know, to keep up, you got to, you got to change the way you engage with people. So like what's, I don't know, the sort of the, the biggest sort of trends you see in, in social media and building of communities. Hmm. The biggest trend. Um, in, in, in like beer social specifically. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Hmm. It's an interesting question. Um, yeah, I mean, I run. Well, I, I started uh, Hop Culture Mag M A G on Instagram. We have over a hundred thousand followers now. I'm Hop Culture Ken. I think put there, and then uh, at Untapped is 133k now. I mean, I've seen breweries that have hundreds of thousands. You know, 300,000. I think just over 300,000. I forget who it was, but I saw someone the other day that was. That's probably the most I've seen a single brewery have um though i'm sure it's higher uh craft brewery um as far as trends go i think uh, i don't know if it's a trend but one thing that all of the breweries that really have a high follower follower uh, count tend to have in common is uh quality so um you know in the last couple years i mean it it sounds not so crazy now, but when we first started and told people we were investing in a social media manager as like uh, a job, um, people were like, what, like, why are you, why would you do that? Like, that's just a a monkey could do it. Um, and I think now people are, are taking that a lot more seriously. Um, and not only, uh, the, just, having content creators who know how to uh, shoot photography really well, but, but then having somebody who knows how to match the aesthetic of a brand, um, having somebody who knows how to interact um, and create conversation and communicate with people well through an online medium, um, I think is a learned skill. It's not something that anyone can just do. And so um, I've seen more and more people start to take that seriously um, just like they take, you know, their, the craft of making beer seriously. And I think that in 2022, forgot the year for a second, uh, 
you know, it's become sort of a, a, a general, a standard piece of the, of the craft brewery playbook, right? Like, uh, making really good beer at this point. I know in the U S we have, I think over 9,000 breweries now. Um, I don't know how many are in the UK, but I'm, I'm sure it's a lot as well. Um, making good beer has kind of become the, uh, the cost of admission, right? And then how do you differentiate, differentiate yourself beyond that? I think social media and, and building a really robust digital presence in addition to having sort of that uh, IRL in real life presence is important um, and something that, like I said, when we're looking at trends, just the trend is taking it seriously and realizing that it is um, important and that you can't just give an iPhone eight to, uh, you know, the guy running the taps and say, Hey, take some snaps and pics here in your free time. But, um, you know, people are hiring professional photographers and, and professional social media managers to really, um, engage. So, yeah, I'd say that's the trend probably just taking it seriously and, and, uh, realizing it's more than Instagram and, and these other platforms, TikTok or whatever are more than dance videos and cat memes. Although uh, those are great too. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Justin? Is, is more taking a uh, much cat video, uh, TikTok videos, uh, dance videos right now, or what, what sort of, uh, what sort of parts of the social media world are you all focused on sort of delivering? Yeah, no one wants to see me dance on TikTok, that I can tell you. <laughs> or maybe we, we do. do. <laughs> yeah, hey, it might, might get us more or more likes. Um, yeah, it's, it's something that I very grudgingly have come to accept is a necessity. Um, being perhaps on the, the older school side of, uh, of the industry and, and being around for a little while now, like I say, my, my personal preference is very much to be face to face with people and having kind of those real world experiences with them, uh, and drinking together with them. So I kind of, uh, don't personally use social media. Um, and we, but we, we've been on it for a long time with the brewery and it was very much, okay. Uh, someone go take some pics of something, do a post, whatever. But I'm really, because I wasn't personally that interested in it. We left it perhaps way too long to start to take it a little bit more seriously, which we're starting to do now. Uh, and you can definitely see the impact that those breweries who have started out and are, are quite young, but started out very much with, we are a brand first before we're a brewery, we're going to create a community around us before we even have bricks and mortar. We're going to create an image and we're going to create a lifestyle and get people engaged in that way. And, they can go through incredibly fast growth and have a really dedicated uh, fan base by doing that. So, yeah, I think, like I said, grudgingly, you have to kind of admit that uh, these communities are super important. I think all of the connections that that we have are very important, though, especially in the pandemic. Again, showed that up how when you couldn't be face to face, you have to find another way of communicating. Uh, certainly in in the travels as things are opening back up again and i've been back to the states in the last few months and uh, over in italy and i'll be back in germany and starting to get a, a sense for how things are in the new normal uh, i see a combination of hyper local and global but something is missing in between so what i mean by that is i was going to some you know some really fun local breweries in the states that were super engaged with their local community and, and demographics that you would not have normally associated, you know, 20 years ago with being at, you know, just hanging out in brewery places, you know, families with, you know, babies playing with stuff, older people, people of all ages, uh, it, which is fantastic to see, but they're really, really engaged and they find that engagement through social media and through those kind of interactions. And then that brings them down to, you know, down to the tap rooms to go and, and have a good time together, which, which is great. So it is super important. And people are finding out about things globally because they're reading about it on, you know, on the internet or on social media or whatever. So they're finding out about things that might inspire them or intrigue them, want to go out and research and find out more about it. 
So I think you get this global connection, you have this hyper local connection, but I think what's missing is a national connection. And I think that that's uh, a factor of like distribution problems and, uh, and, and lots of other things, but we have it here in the UK. I kind of felt it a bit in, in all the countries I've been to so far where people are either really dedicated to their local brewery or their local community, or they're interested in what's going on globally but there's something lost in between. So it's how do we bridge that gap? It's really interesting to hear about like the hyper globalization and stuff, because, uh, you know, I know uh, you mentioned earlier untapped uh, is, is Kenny is, is uh, sort of bringing uh, beers from different um, parts of the world to people that wouldn't normally have access to it and stuff. Uh, can you talk more about untapped specifically and how like people kind of, interact with it in a uh, to sell beer or you know how how it's affected um uh the sh the the purchasing habits of of people who enjoy beer right already before you know discovering untapped um especially you know like justin said as things become more hyper globalized yeah uh how much time do you have <laughs> <laughs> give us the elevator uh, pitch of it yeah so um if, if you don't know what it is, Untapped is um, the world's most popular beer app. Um, people use it to find, rate, and review beers and, and share that with their friends. A lot of people, um, you don't have to put a rating in. A lot of people just use it uh, just to keep track of uh, beers that they've tried. Um, and yeah, for a lot of people, it's kind of become a, a go-to resource when they are thinking of trying something at a bottle shop just because there is so much out there right now um, and it's hard to know uh, what to spend money on, right? Um, you go into a store and you see this vast shelf with all these cool labels and um, a lot of times it's $20 a four pack. Uh, I don't know how that translates to pounds right now, but um, it's expensive, right? It's not, it's a premium product. And so you kind of want to know what other people are thinking before you go ahead and, and make that purchase. So um, a lot of people use it that way. Um, yeah, we have, let's see, last February, we hit our billionth all time check in. So when you drink a beer and you get on the app and you say, hey, I tried this beer, um, that's one. And so we did that uh, a billion times, which was super cool. Um, it has, you know, millions of downloads globally. Um, and yeah, I think, I, I don't remember the question. Um, I was just telling you roughly what Untapped is and does, but. Um, that was basically the question. So you're I, good. <laughs> love it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's, it's free. Uh, we do actually have a, a paid version, um, which not so many people know about, um, which is super fun and gets you some added features. But for most people, um, if you just want to start using it to connect with other people, to see what other people are thinking about certain products, um, it's free. Um, and we're always, you know, right now we're in discussions, always in discussions about how to improve it um, and, and make it better. Um, we hear, we get feedback all the time from, from consumers, from brewers, uh, and the team is always trying to, to make it better. So I know that's uh, coming, new changes are, are always coming out, new updates. So um, I'm excited for some that I can't talk about right now, which bums me out. But uh, I will say, you know, there are things that we hear um, about the app frequently that that people wish are were, were improved or uh, a different type of experience and it's something that the team takes seriously and we have some really exciting stuff uh coming out soon that i'll tell you about when we meet up for this panel next year <laughs> <laughs> it'll have come out then so uh yeah some things are changing and and uh what i think is a, a really positive way awesome and uh, Jack, I, I know um, Brewmaster has sort of been, you know, building a community uh, as well, right? You know, we're talking about the importance of social media and all that mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. 
do you want to just very quickly sort of give uh, your view on what the brewmaster community has been like? I know yeah. it's still very young and fresh, but... Um, so, the, yeah, a couple of things. Like, so when, when Justin said that, you know, he, he himself isn't, you know, too interested in doing the social media side of it. Like within Orc, me as a programmer, I would do a terrible job of doing all the social media stuff. Um, so thankfully we have like our marketing team uh, who, who you know, shout out to the marketing team. They do a great job. Um, and um, so, and, and they do it like a lot of that interacting with the community. Like as, as Kenny said, like that building of a community is, is something that has to be there to distinguish you from all the others. Like the, the number of companies that put out computer games and a lot of them are probably really great but no one has ever heard of them because you, they don't have that community um so that building of the community is, is like a vital part of you know who we are as a company um uh, and the community itself it's it's you know it's friendly and knowledgeable it's it's got none of that like you know toxic gamer stuff that you that can be associated with it it's, it's all people who who love it and are friendly and like uh, and want to get involved and we have a few different channels to connect with them i say we i mean our marketing team because i'm not i'm not up on the social media myself but they um you know people can join in our discord and like and share their experiences with each other and with the marketing team and and all of that interaction gets fed back to us so like we you know as our as little programmers we we get to hear like how people are responding to things and 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 that always gets fed back into into what we're doing uh, and that's really like an important part of it and uh in case people want to sort of uh learn more about everyone's you know projects and and social medias and stuff like that uh there will be uh links in the event description if you want to know more uh but uh since we're talking about you know games and and you know, home brewers and and sort of the overlap um, and how nice the brewmaster community is. Uh, I want to talk about the overlap between gamers and and home brewers, um, or just brewers, people who are interested in brewing in general. You know, you mentioned earlier, Jack, that there is. We found that there was a large overlap between people interested in the game and people who brew beer. And I'm sure you know Justin and, and Kenny. You all know lots of people who are big into brewing who are also big into games. They, yeah, Kenny himself. <laughs> Perfect personal experience. Uh, so yeah, I, what do you think it is that, that, uh, what part of home brewing or just beer in general appeals to gamers and vice versa? Like why, why is there such a big overlap? Do you think? I think they're both quite nerdy in like a, a certain sense of the words. Like I was going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> is it just that though? Is it just that we're nerds? There's gotta be more, right? It's not cause n- not everyone could be into every nerdy happy all at once, but yeah. But like, what is what does nerd mean, right? I, I think, and and maybe that once we get into that, that's what I meant by. Uh, and Jack, I don't know if you meant the same thing, but I think being a nerd about something just means you want to go deeper, right? Like, if mm. you're uh, a nerd about, uh, I mean, it has connotations with like a certain subculture right like comic books and video games and dungeons and dragons right but i think um it just means you want to know more and you want to engage more with a specific uh, subculture so i think you can be a beer nerd you can be a, a sneaker nerd you can be a, a video game nerd um and so yeah i think the the type of person be, because beer has been made for so many thousands of years and there's just so much to know about it. It's such a huge, you could, you could spend your entire life. I'm, I'm sure Justin would tell you he's, uh, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but I'm sure you're still learning new things um, hmm. about the craft, right? There's just so much to know. Um, and there's always an opportunity to go deeper. And so I think like that, I mean, I'm on what our 80 of Elden ring right now. Uh, I, I think tonight is my night to, to finish it out. But um, it's like, you know, being able to, to really get into something and explore it to its fullest extent. Um, that's what drew me to beer, just like finding all the hidden gems and, and sort of ferreting out as much as there is to know about that world um, is, I think, the same thing 
the same personality trait that draws me to uh, games. Um, just, you know, going deeper into a story and, and exploring that story. So that's my nerdy answer. Jack, I'm, I'm curious if... Uh, no, that's you know, a better description of what a nerd is than, uh, than I was going to say. <laughs> so what did you mean? No, I think I meant that, but I just didn't have the uh, the eloquent words for it. <laughs> I I I don't know. For me, it's it's always been like um, this is going to sound incredibly. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, um, like two things that don't fit too well together. But um, nerds often like to make things, right? And and video games sort of like you're not literally making something, right? But a lot of video games, you're you're working towards doing something or a certain goal it's not uh, a passive experience right yeah, yes you're, you're directly exactly. active in it yeah. you're not just sitting drinking bland lager right yeah. and i feel like people who engage um um you know beer craft at, at a deeper level it's the same thing right they don't want to just sit there and drink they want to learn about the beer they want to learn about the process they want to engage um uh and i i think that sort of goes hand in hand and that's why i think a lot of nerds um pick up a lot of hobbies and then sort of become, you know, jack of all trades, master of none a little bit. I know I'm guilty of that where every three months I'm into a, a completely new hobby, um, you know, deep into the 20th page of that subreddit, um, telling you all these very specific details about it that you probably don't care about. Right. Um, Justin, any, any other nerdy, uh, beer adjacent hobbies? Yeah, I think, uh, one, one thing that tends to go quite well together is during music. So I think, you know, people, people can geek out about whatever they want to, whether that's beer, games, music, comics, films, you know, clothes, whatever. Uh, but I do think the connective tissue between people that like to actively engage in things like making beer, making bread, playing music, um, you know, playing games, that's, I think, a common thread across all of those things. But yeah, music seems to be one that really people, they love to go and explore and, and collect things and, you know, listen and share. So you can have a little bit of solo time doing things and engaging with it. But you can also have a collective experience, either going to, to a concert together with people or, you know, just talking to your friends like, hey, you know, I play drums, you play guitar, you play bass, you, you sing, let's just make a band, let's jam in the garage and and see what happens and that's very very similar i think to you know what happens in the home brewing and other you know geek type communities i geek out on, on lots of stuff so. <laughs> yeah that makes sense i mean like i can't tell you how many times i've 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 played a game about a very specific thing and i'm like oh i now have to know everything about this right which is great like that's what sort of what we want with with brewmaster is we want people to you know take things away from brewmaster and apply to their own you know home brewing efforts uh, Jack, I'm sure you could back me up that like a, a lot of the, the the philosophy of the game is you know uh, sort of onboarding people into home brewing if that's an interest of theirs. That's mm -hmm. you know whether they're deep into it or if it's just something that they're sort of curious about. Yeah, and and making it yeah easy to get into and taking away that like you know there's so much knowledge like it does go so deep like but you want to be able to start somewhere into it. Um... And yeah, introducing them to what all of the things are uh, is an important part of the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to switch gears a little bit from, you know, we've been talking about game uh, um, tech in the social media and the literal standpoint and stuff. Um, but one side of it that I feel like isn't getting a lot of discussion, um, but I think it's important to talk about, is how tech has affected sustainability in the, you know, the beer industry. Uh, Justin, you're probably the best person to start. Uh, with this is, you know, how has technology helped, you know, more become more sustainable as a company and um, how, you know, how has this affected the wider industry at large? Yeah, this is, this is a huge topic for, for the industry, for the world in general, of course, with all the, you know, the issues that, that the world is faced with at the moment that we're all trying to collectively solve. Uh, and the industry looks at it because uh, you could argue it's a very wasteful, process making beer so you take depending on the statistics you want to hear you know it takes about sort of seven times more water than it does to you know produce the same amount of, of beer and there's a lot of waste product that comes out from 
the, the production of beer, there's a lot of grain that gets used, obviously hops and, and yeast and other byproducts and things like that. There's a significant amount of cleaning and wastewater and, and detergents that, that are involved. And there's an incredible amount of energy that's required because you have to heat things up to a boiling point, but then you also have to cool them back down and keep them super cold for extended periods of time. So it's very uh, energy uh, consuming. So how do we tackle those things in the brewing industry at the macro level? Of course, at the, you know, the sort of the huge corporate type breweries uh, have been way ahead on this and have the, the resources to do it. It's starting to trickle down into the small to medium type uh, breweries. So for us, for example, how do we deal with some of these things? Well, the energy one is the, the obvious thing that people are doing is solar panels. So we've done a project to that to put solar panels on the roof to generate as much of our own electricity. Uh, as we can, which uh, considering what's happened in energy prices of late is uh, was, a, was a great investment. <laughs> um, and I wish we had more space for more solar panels. Uh, as far as things like waste byproduct, one thing from a, a commercial point of view that's very handy, particularly in a uh, place like England that has smaller cities with rural populations around it, is you can find farmers to go and take what brewers would call their spent grains or, or the grain that's after the, the mashing process that we use once we've extracted all the sugar out of it. it's fantastic cattle feed the hops that we use go for composting uh, everything from again from farms down to individuals trying to do you know growing their own things at home uh, wastewater is an issue that is starting to you know to hit our side of the industry but you have to look at how much space uh, you've got on site to deal with that. So there, if you're a more rural based brewery, you might do things like planting reed, bre reed beds to filter water back through, you know, naturally into the ecosystem. And another huge area that's getting a lot of attention now is carbon capture because a huge amount of carbon dioxide is uh, generated through the, the fermentation of beer. Now us as a brewery, we've always been uh, as sustainable as you could be with that because everything that we do is naturally carbonated. We don't force carbonate anything. Uh, therefore, the amount of external CO2 that we need to use and the amount of CO2 that we, we release into the environment is as low as you could possibly be at, in being a, a commercial brewery. Uh, we want to go one step further, so we're looking at some sort of uh, miniaturized systems for carbon capture and reuse. Uh, they're, they're expensive, but there's a project that we're looking at at the minute to hopefully kick that off. And that's something that's starting to become almost affordable at the level of a small to medium sized brewery. And of course, you know, carbon capture is something that, that everyone's talking about at the minute. So if that technology, which is starting to become proven, becomes miniaturized and affordable enough, then it would be great to see that, you know, spread and just become the norm in the industry when you set up a brewery, which, which at the moment it isn't. But well, that's definitely an area for technology to, to move up. Yeah, it's I, sustainability is such a, I, I mean, it, it could be its own panel, really. Um, but I, I wanted to throw it out to either, you know, Kenny or Jack, um, if you had any sort of thoughts on where the industry is going with sustainability, Jack more on the game side, obviously, and Kenny more on just the overall brewing industry. Um, I'm sure, especially with your connections to other breweries and stuff, you've sort of seen what they've been doing, what their attempts are. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we were talking before about how initially labs were only used by these larger breweries because they were the only people who could afford the equipment. And I think when you look at uh, innovation and you look at how it gets developed um, and becomes affordable, um, typically you have the bigger institutions that can afford the upfront cost of R&D um, investing in those types of platforms. And then over time, uh, people innovate and it kind of trickles down to the smaller business or even the, the residential user. Um, and so we've seen that happen uh, in, in breweries and in the lab setting. And I am really excited to see that happen in um, the sustainability field as well. Um, is that a guarantee? Will it happen? Uh, no, I think there has to be interest and, and people have to keep pushing for that. Um, 
but you know, we, we've seen a couple things um, start to happen, at least on the packaging side. Um, there's a company, uh, West Rock. They, they don't just do packaging for um, beer, but they, I mean, huge, huge packaging company, and they have a craft beer division that's now doing like cardboard um, can collars instead of the plastic ones that you always see in nature documentaries with seagulls having their heads caught through them and stuff. Um, so I think like that's an example of, of the type of innovation that we have now that um, as more people hear about it and more people invest in it, um, the cost to produce that stuff will become lower and it'll become much more accessible to the average brewery. Um, I mean, of those 9,000 breweries we have in the United States, um, most of them are sole proprietors, right? It's small independent business people. And so um, to be able to afford their own water treatment plants, like uh, I've seen at some of the larger breweries in the United States or um, you know, so much of the sustainability investment is, is capital and resource intensive. Um, it is better for the environment. Um, it's better for the, the planet that we're all living on. And I want to see more of it, but I think it's just going to take uh, more investment um, for more people. So um, I, don't, I don't have a crystal ball. And unfortunately, I can't snap my fingers and make it so that every brewery everywhere is, is uh, net neutral when it comes to their what they're putting out into the environment, but, um, on the whole brewers tend to be a conscientious bunch. And when we do see investments made, um, you know, it, it has been in really smart community oriented, uh, places. And so I have hope, uh, in my, my colleagues on the brewing side. Yeah, I, I completely agree about, you know, the brewers being a conscientious bunch. I just from the research we've done on Brewmaster, I've definitely have gotten that sense where it's sustainability is really important. And, you know, a, a lot of that interest from brewers often drives that technological uh, innovation itself, as which is great. Right. Um, but um, we are coming down to the closing of our panel. So I very quickly wanted to just go around and thank you all and give you all, you know, a quick minute to just. Uh, say any last things you wanted to say or any last plugs. Um, so, Jack, why don't we start with you? Uh, wishless brewmaster. Uh, <laughs> I know it's been uh, lovely to meet you both and and nice to have a good chat. Um, it's, yeah, been very interesting. Um, and I guess what I didn't say is that uh, one of the things about beer and technology I found interesting is, is that you go if you go around like ancient ruins of sites, like beer technology is always, is always something that you see there. Uh, and it's just like, it's so interesting that it's like a fin foundational part of, of like the culture. And, and it's obviously hard to say like how much of that was important. Like, did we build settlements so that we could brew beer? I'm not going to say we did, but maybe we did. Um, and so, yeah, it's very important. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fascinating to see how like far we've come on uh, from there. I'm gonna I'm gonna echo the uh, wish list brewmaster uh, <laughs> from Jack, uh, Justin. Yeah, no, it's, it's great to uh, it's great to have these discussions again. Technology bringing us together across uh, across the globe to talk about things that are important and fun and meaningful to all of us. So I think keeping that dialogue going is you know is super important. So everyone should you know reach out, stay engaged, and uh, yeah, let's keep trying to make things better. Kenny, right on. Um, well, I just wanted to thank you uh, for taking the time as our fearless moderator and um, Jack. And There's Justin. a lot of fear, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> you hide it well. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Jack and Justin, thank you as well. Um, I have seen uh, Brewmaster in action. Um, it is super, super cool. And so I will also echo uh, the sentiment to wishlist Brewmaster, uh, even though. I'm not affiliated in any way. It just looks awesome, and I'm I'm super excited to be involved. Um, you can connect with me at Hop Culture Ken on Instagram. Um, love talking about this type of stuff. So um, if anybody has questions or wants to get in touch, uh, you can also check out Untapped at Untapped U N T A P P D uh, iOS and Android store as well for the app. And then uh, 
hop culture at hop culture mag hop culture.com that's pretty much it uh thank you all great so, and just so, as a reminder to everyone the all the links are below sorry just i might have just cut you off sorry 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 to interrupt there's one thing i almost forgot which is uh remember we're all talking about drinking beer and we do have the uh, the collaboration beer coming out so we have the the Oroch digital coming out which is the uh, the first kind of recipe that uh that the gamers can play in the game we've created a, a real version that you can use your your real tongue to go and taste and uh, and see what you think about it and how close you came to it in the game so you can fantasize it's got a it's got a great label you guys designed and that's going to be coming out i think it's end of july beginning of august so uh yeah it's great to be involved in that really appreciate it and hope everyone enjoys it Yes, thanks. Thanks again for that. It's it's awesome that we get to have a a beer from the game in real life. That's awesome. Um, right. So thanks all for joining us. And um, you know, a quick reminder to everyone watching that links for everything we've mentioned are going to be in the event description. Um, so yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.